I see. Why do you need that? It's the market. My family really needs some luck right now. I don't want it to be sold. Michael, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Likewise, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for, for sharing your film. Um, of course. It was done incredibly, incredibly well. Masterful work, <laughs> man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I just want to talk about it. So the movie is uh, Save the Flea. Mm-hmm. Um, and before we get into the technical aspects, can you tell me, because actually, like, I, I read up a little bit, there was a flea market here in Miami that mm-hmm. no longer exist, exists. And so did you shoot this right before the flea market closed? Well, no, that, so I think that one is the Opalaca flea market, I believe. So we shot this at the, uh, the Tropicana flea market, which is, um, somewhere near, uh, 36th street. Um, and I believe that's still open, even though after we shot, um, there was a couple fires, we got permission to shoot there. I wanted to shoot at a couple flea markets, but that one seemed well, first of all, they gave us permission. Um, it was super hard to, to just get permission mm. anywhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, they let us shoot it, shoot on the weekends. It's only open on the weekends, uh, which was uh, quite a, a task to, to do, shooting at a like active life uh, flea market. Um, so no, I was super grateful that they allowed us to, to, to do that for, I think for, we shot Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday it was closed, but we shot in a warehouse. So, so yeah, yeah, those three days. And and what, what led you to, you to, to want to tell, want tell the story, the, story. the development of the, the script? Right. So I, I've been going to flea markets, I don't know, since, since I was a kid, uh, always had an inkling that I was going to do a, a story there. Um, and then, you know, after going a couple of times and kind of brewing up a story, uh, you know, and then the way that Miami is kind of going in the direction where everything's being bought and, and, you know, developed and overdeveloped. And, you know, uh, I just thought now is a good time to, to kind of do a story like that, but, you know, with a little bit of a, a sci-fi, not even sci-fi element, but like a fantastical element. So I so saw, I saw online that, that you have a comic, comic book, book background, yeah. which I think definitely showed in, in how you shot mm-hmm. it. I mean, everything, Mm-hmm. felt so perfect uh, <laughs> you, did man. you board a lot of the of the the film i i storyboarded the end sequence um i guess like the climax with the showdown mm-hmm. between the kids and the uh and el gringo the the bad dude um but no i i think yeah you know doing creating comic books has led me to kind of choose better the shots that i'm going to to create um before creating comic books i was doing films but you know very loosely um Mm -hmm. and then through comic books uh you know because i you you have to pay for the artist i'm not the artist i'm just the writer uh the artist the colorist the letters you know you really have to kind of pick and choose you know the shots with the the artist and so, you know, I kind of stopped film for a little bit and then did a couple of uh, graphic novels. And so then when I got back into film, I was like, well, let me utilize um, what I've been doing, my process for comic books into film, sort of being more selective uh, with the shots. And I will say, though, uh, when I shot this one, you know, I, I shot what I wanted to sh- shoot, but... You know, I, I feel like on the next one, I do want to be a little bit more loose, um, time permitting, which I think, you know, when mm-hmm. you're a little bit loose, you have that time to kind of like, not necessarily improvise, but kind of like look at a scene and kind of, you know, shoot what you want to shoot, but then maybe do a different angle. I think you come up with better results. Um, with this one, I got what I wanted, but, you know, I'll be honest, I feel like I could have, you know, if I had more time, I would have improvised a little bit. I think that happens with all our films, right? That yeah, we yeah. always go back oh, to course. they're all which we would have done a million things different. Yeah. Um but it, your film case. definitely had this Spielberg esque uh mm-hmm. feeling. Um and 
I want to talk a little bit, believe it or not, the first thing that popped for me was the music. Yeah. Um, I think you did a really, really amazing job mm -hmm. in, in your cues. I mean, mm -hmm. Not only the actual songs you used, mm -hmm. but how you used the score to... Mm -hmm. uh, to separate scenes, to move things forward. Right. Sometimes, like it, it might even feel like a cue on a TV show, mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was done. It was done really, really well um, to keep you engaged. How was? Uh, how did you approach music? So I've had this. Well, first of all, it was done by my best friend, um, Mickey DeGrand. Uh, uh, he's he has a band called Second Mirrors, um, which is phenomenal, phenomenal mm -hmm. band. They started in my in Miami, but now they they're kind of they he moved to L.A. Um, and he's just like a film buff uh, himself, just like just like I am. Uh, we went to high school together, so pretty much. I mean, I I edited the movie and I gave him the movie, and he, you know, I told him a couple cues like where the music should go, and he kind of just he just went went for it. And I I think the first couple rounds we we're doing something different. But I was just like, you know what? Fuck it, let's just do like a John Williams thing. Actually, <laughs> actually, I don't even think I told him that. I think I think he just he just knew that that's the route that like we both wanted to go. Uh, yeah. And he's kind of really good at uh, just just executing that. Um, so you know, all the all the all it, the it, it really him. felt like, like you you had John Williams at, at points. Like it was it was. I mean, super believe it or not, he, believe it or not, I mean, he, ah man, he did that he did that score in like a week and a half. Incredible. Um, so, you know, and you know, you hear, uh, you hear back to the future kind of, you hear, uh, Jaws a little bit, you know, there's a lot of, uh, John Williams and Alvin Silvestri in, in, the, in the score. Yeah. yeah. And then you did a really good job, job going into, into soundtrack, into songs. Mm -hmm. Um, that even felt Scorsese-ish in the middle to me. Exactly. Um, yeah, and, and and people have yeah. told me that. Uh, and that, that's kind of like picking those 50s style songs was like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I love that decade. Um, and I was fortunate to kind of like pick like, I guess, Mexican renditions of those songs, uh, which, <laughs> which I definitely fit, I think, fit the vibe. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I think you know short, short films, films are tough because you know you want mm -hmm. to tell, you know you want to create this arc in such a short, short time, and I think yeah. the way you you created that montage in the middle mm -hmm. with that piece of music and the John Williams style mm -hmm. score it really made it feel super complete. Awesome, awesome. Um, when you when you, it was funny that you just mentioned Mexican because when I started watching the film for the first time and I see. Mm -hmm the the guy in the in the sombrero i felt like wait is this is this film in la you know i lived in la for a long time and like i i, I did not expect it to be in miami mm -hmm. um do you uh, like are you of mexican descent no, or do you I, just i'm i'm cuban uh spanish uh, mm -hmm. uh hungarian german i like a, a <laughs> bunch of things but you know it's funny i i the short got into um uh, it was like a big genre of uh, film festival, and when I received, I couldn't go, but I, re I they sent me like the 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 booklet, the, the I guess the uh, the film guide for the festival, the program. and the description said, "Oh, short film that takes place in New Mexico," and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I never, I never, That's I never funny. said that, but I, I, you know, and for a second I was like, oh, should I tell them it was trying to Miami? But I was like, you know what? That's even better that they thought that it was in New Mexico. Um, but I did. I, I wanted to incorporate just all different types of cultures. I didn't want yeah. to single out, you know, Cuban or Mexican or you know, and especially in that flea market is there's all types. So yeah. it would be it would be ridiculous of me to like even, you know, narrow. But you know, to you one. know, it's funny. Like I I having lived in LA for such a long time, and I miss Mexican food here, in Miami. Mm -hmm. As you know, mm -hmm. it's just not you know it's not as prevalent. Yeah, I did hear that the best Mexican food is at a flea market. I think in Homestead. I haven't been out there yet, but uh, it's probably need to the go. one. The one you're, the one you're think, thinking about is the Redlands flea market, maybe. 
Mm. And okay. that that one's down in Homestead, and and you know that was actually the first location I wanted to shoot at, but um, the ecosystem in those places are like, it's kind of like the short film where like some dude owns it that's not supposed to be owning it, and they got it through a family, and now you know it's run by the son. And I remember trying to get permission, and he was just like. Somehow I somehow I ended up getting the the guy's number, um, and he was just like, "How did you get this number? Like, don't ever reach me again. Like, I don't. We don't want oh. any cameras in in this wow. location. And it's it's kind of crazy like that. But you know what? I'm glad I didn't get to shoot there because the, that mar- that market is like massively huge. And yeah. uh, another problem with shooting at a flea market is the sound. Um, every booth plays like you know their own music to like attract customers and so when we shot at the one here uh next to me um near the near the airport uh once they saw the cameras you know every booth like lit up with their own music so i had to tell them hey like we're shooting and they're like well you know if you want me to turn down my music you're gonna have to pay me so so you know that kind of shot uh-huh. You shot, you shot the, whole the whole thing you said in one, one weekend? weekend? Uh Saturday, Sunday, and a Monday. Yeah. Okay. So it's a lot of a lot of paying, a lot. Pe- pe- paying people off to turn down their music. Yeah, and I have, and to, have to, say to say your sound, sound your, your color, color, everything, everything is pristine. pristine. Uh I could talk I mean I could talk about sound, but we already did a little bit of music. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about um your dp and 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 how you guys approach the the shooting since mm-hmm. again it just looked looked beautiful well so the dp is a this really talented dude sherman johnson uh he comes well he's done a, a couple features um but he mainly does um he works in like the advertisement world um and yeah I, it was through a friend that we met a couple months before the short um i was kind of like going through a couple dps um and a lot of them the page the script was like 25 pages long uh and you know we wanted to shoot this in three days and a lot of people are like no way to do you know like i don't want to be part of a thing where we shoot you know 12 scenes a day um but sherman was just like he didn't even care he was just like what like shoot at a flea market this is awesome uh i'll do it and then we you know we went we did like a tech scout and i like pretty much took him through the script i was like all right look like you know this is the shot here this is a shot here we're gonna do this that and that um and he was he was totally game for it um and you know we it was him and then we had like one grip truck um and that was it uh and we <laughs> we were rolling the first day we got out of there by like six and I, I was like oh man this is great like we had a perfect day but then like the next two days were like just even longer uh so no no uh, credit to him because he like you know he, he really he, he did a good great job in order to, to shoot 25 pages in three days mm-hmm. uh, do you spend most of the time on a steady cam that's a good question uh it, yes uh well i was actually shoulder rigged Mm. Poor, poor Sherman. <laughs> I mean, I wish I, I wish, looking back, I definitely would have done more. I would have gotten like a steady cam op for some of the shots. Um, but no, he he did shoulder and sticks, pretty much. Cool. And yeah, I, I yeah yeah, I'm sure his back was hurting for sure. Well, again, well, everything, everything looks, looks so pristine. pristine so, so I know you're looking at it from thanks. the director's eye. Who would have changed it to something? But I'm like, I don't even know where you would have gotten smoother right, movements. Right. Well, yeah, there's, there's a couple. There's a couple of shots that are like, and mm-hmm. maybe I would have like had more like flow or direction um, to play around with. But no, I yeah, it, it worked. It worked great. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, thank you, Michael. Thank you for for sharing the movie. Um, I think it's it's so fun, and and we're you know we're we're playing it on our first night mm-hmm. and I awesome. uh, can't wait to meet you in person and yeah, for, likewise, for you man. to meet our team here and, and for us to get together. Yeah. Likewise. I'm excited, dude. Thanks for starting this up. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Awesome. awesome. Michael. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much.